That'd be you great. Should. Yeah, absolutely. Come on, blue line. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest chef was one of the seven extraordinary SOS free chefs on our Thanksgiving Day Cook Along special. And sadly, she is not able to come back on Christmas, so she's going to be doing a wonderful cooking demo today where she makes her spectacular hearty lentil shepherd's pie and a fruity coleslaw. Her name is Tammy Kramer, and she is from the blog and the popular YouTube channel, popular blog and popular YouTube channel, Nutmeg Notebook. Please welcome her to the show. Thanks for coming back, Tammy. We love you. Thank you, Chef AJ. I'm so happy to be here today. Me so I, too. I hope you had a great interview with um, Dr. Goldhammer. I did, and I'm sorry. Guys, I apologize. I'm late today. It's just that that was the only time I could interview Dr. Goldhammer for the upcoming the Truth About Weight Loss Summit, which hopefully Tammy will be a guest expert in maybe doing the cooking demo and telling her story. Because in addition to being a spectacular chef, she has a tremendous weight loss story of years of yo-yo dining. And then now 50 pounds have been gone forever to be released, never to come back again. And maybe she'll have time to talk about that as well. And hopefully we'll get a cameo appearance by a very fun guy that assists her. And that's Tom Kramer. And guys, we have a big favor to ask you. We don't ask much for this show. You know, we all do it for free. But Tammy needs 700 more followers on Instagram to get to the next level at 10,000. And when she gets that, she, she gets like a prize. She gets to do more stuff. So please consider subscribing to Nutmeg Notebook on Instagram. I would do it, but I'm already subscribed or followed. I, I always get subscribed, followers, users. It's all these weird words. So what can I tell you? Yep, yeah, that's what they say. Tommy and Tam. I always call them Tommy and Tam. It's Tammy and Tom. But <laughs> Kylie says Tammy and Tom are a great deed. Indeed, they are. So if you haven't subscribed to them on YouTube, they go live lots of times, but definitely on Sundays. And she'll tell you all about where to find her. But let, let's hear from Tammy. Not You don't need to talk to me. I'm just here to run the tech. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. I really appreciate you allowing me to come back on today and cook for everybody. And the Hearty Lentil Shepherd's Pie is a recipe that I came up with because I have a hearty lentil vegetable stew recipe. And I kept thinking, I think this would make a really great shepherd's pie. And then one of my um, online friends, Colleen Collins, who you know, because she was in Ultimate Weight Loss Program with me and also very successful at getting to a healthy weight and staying there. And what? When do you want me to push the button? Oh, not yet. Um, <laughs> I want to push the button. He wants to push a button. Um, <laughs> And she wrote to me like a year or so ago, and she said, I just want you to know that I reduced your stew down and turned it into a shepherd's pie. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have been thinking that would work. And so instead of having to reduce it down, I just came up with a new recipe with the basic concept of the stew. And so I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make. I've got my six Whoa. quart, pressure cooker already nice and hot and AJ um, you're you have the recipes to share with everybody yes I'm actually you know so I can't put them in before the show because I'm limited by characters but actually that when you see me kind of working on my computer I'm doing it now so in the next five minutes the recipes will be there but guys if you're watching on Facebook unfortunately you won't see them you gotta hop over and join us on YouTube where you can see everything in the show notes there you go they're also on my blog nutmegnotebook.com and so I have um, two cups of chopped onion here and that's going in. And I got these really cute dishes yesterday at Costco, you guys. They come in a bunch of different colors and I just love them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the carrots. So we've got a cup of carrots that are going in here as well. I love dishes, AJ, and these are so colorful and cute. And then I have some celery that's going in. And so we just want to saute these, of course, without oil, because I don't use any oil. And I'm just trying to take some of that raw out, especially out of the onions, just by sauteing them a little bit ahead of time. Plus what this does is it preheats the pressure cooker and it allows it to come up to pressure much quicker because we're not starting off with a bunch of cold ingredients. So it's also helpful with that. So while this is gonna just saute for a couple of minutes, so while it's doing that, I can tell you my story. So Tom, now you get to push the button. Oh, okay. 
and like show a, my before. It's like a little kid with an elevator. Mommy, I want to push the button. That's right. So that is me before. That was at my highest weight. I weighed about 174 pounds there. And I was really unhappy. We had gone on a trip um, to Europe. And I thought, I, I guess... I thought I didn't look that bad, but this was before we had digital cameras. And when we got back home and got all of our film developed and I saw how big I was, I was devastated. I, I was just, it really was a crushing blow. I guess I'd been in denial. You know, you can look in the mirror and only look from your waist up and, you know, pretend that you're not as big. That yeah, that's the big photo from oh, that trip. You just showed it. Oh. Okay. That was the one. Well, yeah. And then, and then this, 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 this was, the was a, this was the other one from the trip. And um, I mean, my boobs entered the room before I did. They were just so huge. Which one you're standing in front of in the other photo? Well, the fruit, but obviously I wasn't eating the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> that was his point. But anyway, so I met Chef AJ in about 2015, and I joined her online program that she had. And it totally changed my life. So not only was I able to get to my healthy weight, um, which I stay like between 124 and like 129, um, you know, because it, it varies. It You know, if I am eating a little too much uh, desserts, then I gain a couple pounds. But uh, it so changed me because I was able to stop yo-yo dieting which I had, I had tried every diet out there um, and I could always lose weight on them. But the hard thing was for me was to maintain. So AJ taught me, and I, and by the way, you guys, she did not ask me to tell you any of this. I asked her if I could share with you, because I know this time of year, a lot of people are thinking about new year's resolutions and losing weight and changing their lives. And um, so she taught me all about calorie density and sequencing my meals and eating vegetables for breakfast. And these were all new concepts for me that I had never uh, heard of before. And then she also introduced me to The Pleasure Trap, the book that Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle wrote. And that was eye opening. So I just learned that I was eating the wrong foods and I was trying to eat the wrong foods in moderation, which um, for my personal body, I just cannot do that. And so I, I just felt like it was a miracle, but really it's only about learning how to eat the right foods. So once I learned that I was able to lose the weight and I have kept it off for almost six years now, it'll be six years in February. So thank you, AJ, for that. And if you guys haven't tried her Feel Fabulous Over 40 program, I highly recommend that you do that. I know she'll put a link to it in the show notes and you can actually try it for free for two weeks. I don't know of any other company that does that, but AJ does that. You can go in and see everything that she's offering and you will love it. Plus, you get to be in the private Facebook group, which is a huge support. And that was a really big thing for me was having the online support and meeting other people. And you'll find out that there's people probably where you live as well that are eating the same way that you're going to eat on a whole food, plant-based, SOS-free diet. So anyway, um, changed my life. I couldn't be happier. Uh, Tom eats pretty much the same way I do. He's like Charles, though, AJ's husband, where he can eat more of the high calorie foods uh, and not gain weight. So, you know, he indulges more in that than I do. OK, so if these are looking really good. I don't know. Do you have the overhead cam? Yeah. And um, you can see. Oh, and it smells wonderful, you guys. Really wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more ingredients. So we've got a can of fire roasted organic, no salt added tomatoes that are going in. And these are my favorite tomatoes. And I know that AJ loves them too. And the fire roasted just have a little more flavor, but no worries if you can't find them, you guys, it's okay. Just use the diced tomatoes, whatever kind you can get. And if you're doing salt free, of course, you want to do the no salt added. Then I also have some sweet potato. And you know I love my Japanese sweet potatoes, but today in this recipe, we're just using the regular, like a garnet yam, just the regular orange ones, because we're going to put mashed potatoes on top of it. And I love the color 
that these add. And also, you know, the Japanese and the Hannah's are a little bit sweeter. And I really don't want this to be a sweet dish. This is a savory dish. And so we're just going to go with those. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my broth in before I add the lentils. And this is uh, two and a half cups of low sodium broth. Now, for a lot of recipes, I do go ahead and use water instead of broth, but I do like the little bit of added flavor that the broth gives us in this recipe. So you can make your own broth. AJ, did you just do a video about making your own broth? Yeah, actually, I have this Nutrimilk machine, which I use for nut butters for Charles and plant milks, and it makes broth in six minutes. And it's actually on sale for the rest of the month for 21% off. So that's like $105 off. And so it's amazing. I really ride, check it out if you can, guys. It's a fabulous machine. You can use it instead of your blender, instead of your food processor. It, it even makes banana ice cream, we found out. So it's pretty versatile. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, new tools, I probably shouldn't watch that video because then, <laughs> then I'll want it. Okay, now these are lentils and these are just the regular, you know, sometimes people call these green lentils and sometimes people call them brown. They're kind of a greenish brown and these are just the regular type of lentils. You don't want to use the red ones because the red ones dissolve down and break down too much. And we want this to have texture and that's why we're using these. So those are going to go in. And that was two cups of those. But you guys are gonna, you're gonna get the recipe, so don't worry about it. Now we're gonna talk about some seasonings that are going in this. So um, this is one of my favorites. It's Herbs de Provence. And I got this one at Trader Joe's, but you know, every everyone that does spices has it. It's a blend of thyme, marjoram, savory, rosemary, basil sage and a little bit of lavender. And if you don't have this, don't worry, just Google it. And you probably have all those individual spices and then you can just make your own. Then it also calls for a sweet paprika. I gotta turn this so you can see. And this one is from Local Spicery. This is one of my favorite places to get spices from. I know AJ loves them too. She came and visited me um, last fall and we got to go to their store in Marysville and we had so much fun. And we Sampling. had a sleepover. Remember the, remember the, the lady's little girl saying, to, does not make Nova and Chef AJ do sleepovers? <laughs> That was so cute, wasn't it? And then her mom got to say, yes, as a matter of fact, they do. They do have sleepovers. Yeah. Well, before, so, before the pandemic, yeah, for Before sure. the pandemic. So this is a sweet paprika. And so you, you don't want to use smoked for this recipe. That would be the wrong um, flavor. But you can buy one that says sweet. There's a Hungarian sweet uh, paprika usually at the grocery store that you can get, or you can order this from local spicery. And so this one I really like. It's very mild and very nice. And then for a salt substitute, let's see, I think I have another one over there. You can use t uh, Benson's Table Tasty. And of course, AJ introduced this to me and it does have a nice salty flavor to it. But I want to show you a new one that has just come out that's also good. Um, I'm, I'm making two shepherd pies today. And so this one I'm going to give to my daughter. So I didn't want to try a new ingredient, but this is from Well Your World and it's called Stardust and it is a salt free substitute. So, and it's really good. You guys, I like it. I've, I've been um, using it on vegetables and potatoes and it's really fun. So you can get that from Well Your World. And then I'm going to use a little bit of black pepper and I've already measured out all of my spices here. And so I'm going to go ahead and put those in there and add a little bit of fresh ground black pepper and AJ's allergic to pepper. So I always have to remember that when she comes to visit me. You then have the I'm best bed and breakfast I've ever been to. Thank you. Well, I can say the same about you because I spent a week down um, in India, Tom and I did, and you fed us every day, and it was amazing. No, that and was what like, did you say? You, you, yeah, and you were there, and two other girls, and you said, oh, we're going to gain so much weight, and everybody went home thinner, eating exactly like me with dessert and yep. huge portions of food. It was we had a perfect experiment. It was. We had dessert. She made dessert every day, you guys, and I don't eat dessert every day at home, and we all lost weight. It was amazing, and I felt like we were just eating all the time. 
Um, but when you're eating the right foods, that's the difference it makes. So then we would put the lid on this and uh, set the, have it on high. And I believe it's for 10 minutes and 10 minutes on high pressure. There we go. And I'm going to let Tom take that away. You can unplug it, honey. And then um, if you would plug it back in over there and set it for 10 minutes. We're getting a lot of compliments on your hair from Robin and Linda. Shiny, lustrous. They like it long. You look great. You're an inspiration. Loves her recipe. Oh, did they oh. like Tammy's hair too? <laughs> yeah, Tom thinks they're talking about it. Oh, this. did I say Tom? I always get you guys mixed you up. Didn't. You didn't. He's just being a wiseacre today. You know how he is. Well, thank you guys so much. This is my COVID hair. Um, every time I have an appointment set up, we get shut down. And my appointment was for this coming Monday, and we went on lockdown. And so all the hair salons had to close. So that keeps happening to me. Um, so my hair just keeps growing. But thank Ten you. Minutes on release. 10 minutes, and it'll be um, natural, natural release. release. Yeah. So I'm just going to walk around and grab my other uh, pressure cooker here. It's a good thing I have so many of them. I think I have six pressure cookers. Okay, so this this is my eight quart. And um, since I was making double everything, I had to get out the big ones as well. But I want to, Tom, can you do the overhead cam so they can see how this looks? Oh, do you want me to bring it forward or back? Forward here, look over here at your window. Here we go. Can you guys see how this looks? That this looks is amazing. so this is yeah, this is the filling and it's so delicious. I wish you could smell it. Oh, it's so great. Okay, so at this point what I like to do is I like to add a cup of frozen peas. And if you don't like peas, it's okay. Use corn. Use whatever you like. And you have to remember that recipes are really just ideas, right? Just to get you started. And then you can do your own thing. You can tweak them. So it's cooking is different than baking. Baking, you have to be more precise um, and have dry ingredients with your liquid ingredients be balanced. But with cooking, you can totally change things up. And then we're going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I just really like the flavor that it adds. I'm just using a regular inexpensive one. This is just from Costco. It's their regular balsamic. So you don't need to use a fancy one in this recipe. You can if you want. You, you could use one of the California balsamics. And I'm just going to measure out about a tablespoon maybe a tablespoon and a half. It just, it adds such a nice flavor. You know how we used to use like Worcestershire sauce. I feel like this kind of has a little bit of that same tanginess that it gives to a dish. So I like to add it to stews and soups and certainly this filling. And then I just want to stir it and give it a nice stir to incorporate everything. And you don't want to have a bunch of liquid. If you cook it, and every once in a while, I don't know why, if I just get heavy handed with my water, there might be a little bit of liquid in the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll just turn the pressure cooker to saute and I'll saute, put, put it on saute and then I'll just stir everything around until that extra water evaporates. But um, I don't have any today. And that could be because it got to sit for a little bit and rest before I got to this part. Now I have a nine by 13, I'm done with this, honey. Now I have a nine by 13 casserole dish and um, it's a nice deep one and you do want it to be deep because we are gonna heap on top of this a bunch of wonderful garlic mashed potatoes. And so what we do is put all of this is gonna go into my nine by 13 pan, which is, Pour it all out here. And I love white dishes. I think food looks amazing in white dishes. Now this nine by 13 pan will fit in my Breville Smart Oven Air. I do not air fry the shepherd's pie, but the air fryer also doubles as an oven because it's a toaster oven plus a whole bunch more. And AJ has one too, and we love them. I just want to get everything in there. Then we're just going to spread this out. 
and this will feed a lot of people. It's so great. So it's a wonderful dish to make for the holidays, not just Thanksgiving, which a lot of people told me they did make this for Thanksgiving. And you know what, AJ, I've never made a video on how to make this. I have the recipe on the blog, but I never made a video. So today's it's- Well, you're making it now and I can give you a download if you wanna put it on your channel because you're making yeah, it. That, oh, that would be great. There. So that looks good. Now we need some mashed potatoes to go on top of this. So I'm done with that, honey. And I'm gonna grab the other pressure cooker and I'm gonna give this to Tom. <laughs> okay, so uh, the empty one there. And then if you would drain those potatoes for me. Okay, thank you. Now, if you, if you don't have more than one pressure cooker, here's what you do. You go ahead and make the filling first. And then when it's done, pour it into your pan and wash out the liner. And then you can make the mashed potatoes in it. And I'm just going to grab the ingredients for the mashed potatoes. Okay. Any questions, AJ? Let me look. I was so busy watching you. I didn't even look if there was questions. Let's see. Ah, da, 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 da. Ah. So, <laughs> sorry. I'm just. I've been. I've been. See, I was actually. That's a problem when I actually watch the show instead of watching the chat. Well, no we have Mich Michelle is new to the show and she just got herself an instant pot and loves plant-based shepherd pie. So that's great. Oh, here's awesome. a question. Stephanie says, not a fan of sweet potatoes. Would the consistency be the same if using russets or maybe Yukon gold? Well, you could, you could just remember that you're also going to have mashed potatoes on um, top of it, but you could use mushrooms. If you like mushrooms, you could use mushrooms instead. Um, because you are gonna load it, the top of it up with mashed potatoes. So, so you, could, you could add more potatoes to it. There wouldn't be a problem doing that. So I have two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes here and I did not peel this batch. You're gonna see that the other batch I did peel because I'm gonna give one of these casseroles to my daughter and her family. And she does not like the peel to be left on Tammy, the Yukon Golds. Can you hear me, Tammy? Oh, we froze, Tom. Yeah, you're, it's only showing me now. So we need to get you back on because they don't want to be looking at me for the whole hour. Um, this has never happened. How do we get you back on? Okay, he, Tom's looking. That's weird. In the meantime, maybe I can do a little song and dance. Okay, he's yeah. going to switch cameras for a second. Okay, because uh, it's just it's just going to me and it's kind of boring. Can you hear us? I can hear you, but we can't see you anymore. I can see you, but all they're seeing is me. Hello, everyone. That is so weird. Yep, I'll have to do what they call as filler. Let's... Yes, be the filler while Tom's looking at what's happening. Yep. Hey, I'll power down the camera system and power back up. Like okay. Before. All right. When you want to just use one camera? Maybe. Do you think that happens when you do more than one camera? Oh, and here's a question. Nancy says, does this freeze well? And Mary says, how about using butternut squash in place of the sweet potatoes? That's a good idea. Butternut squash would be great, or yeah, kabocha squash. Or... This. Thank you. So that's not I'm boring, Barbara. It's just that I, I don't have the recipes. Uh, it's it's not diverting to you like it usually does. Okay. Click down on that start video. Ah, thank God you were back. back. Keep talking. Okay, great. Okay, so here we are. So Phew. I have. I know, I'm sorry, heart attack. Um, technology is great until it doesn't work. So I like to use the Yukon Gold potatoes. And if I'm just making it for us, I don't peel them. But I'm giving one of these casseroles to our daughter and her family. And she likes the Yukon Golds to be um, peeled. So this batch of potatoes will be for us. And the one that I've already made will be for her. So this is just going to go in. And I've just you know, I've scrubbed them and I've cubed them and that's all that I had to do. Then I'm also going to add in here a cup of low sodium vegetable broth. And I do like the vegetable broth in this dish too, you guys, just because it adds some flavor. And when we're not using salt, 
um, in our food, we do have to use other ingredients to give us that boost of flavor so that what we're eating doesn't taste um, flat to us. And then also um, some garlic. And I say on there like eight cloves of garlic, but you have to judge how big your garlic cloves are. And I have some today that are giant. So I didn't want to use eight of them that are this size. So just kind of, you know, judge that by yourself. I also sometimes, if I have time, I do like to roast my garlic in the um, oven and uh, use that because that makes for a really nice flavor as well. But I didn't have time for that today. So, you know, we're just going to go with it this way. And then I have a little bit of seasoning. Again, I'm using um, some Table Tasty No Salt Seasoning Mix, and that's just going to go in and it can go in before or it can go after um, you after they're cooked either one then we just put the lid on this and we would set it to sealing this one I don't have to because it automatically this is the milky and it automatically um, goes to sealing for me which is really nice and then you just set it for um, four minutes and um, on high pressure and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it comes out. So then I just need that other pressure so we're cooker. Switching this one with that one. Yep, we're switching. <laughs> and so these are like the best mashed potatoes. I love these. And if you have, um, oh, somebody asked about, can you freeze the lentil shepherd's pie? You know, I've actually never frozen it myself, but I think that it should freeze just fine. Uh, we always eat it all up. And so... Um, I never get to see if it would freeze or not. Okay. I'm trying to it up there. Let's see what's in here. Oh, it has just a little bit of pressure for some reason. Here we go. All right. Looking good. I see now this is what I love about the Yukon gold potatoes is that they already have that yellow gold color and that just makes my brain think that they are um, already buttery. I just I love that. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of almond milk to them and I like to preheat the almond milk. I just warm it up in the microwave a little bit because I don't want to cool down my mashed potatoes. And I just start with a little bit to begin with, and then I mash them. And this is my favorite potato masher. I like this type. For me, it just works the best. And how much milk you're going to need to add is just going to depend on how watery the potatoes are. Sometimes I need more than I do at other times. What I love about Yukon Golds is you almost don't need hardly any liquid. Exactly. They taste so good. You know, one time, AJ, I had just finished batch cooking and our son came over, our adult son came over to visit. And so um, I gave him some Yukon Gold potatoes, just a hot out of the oven. And he was like, Mom, what did you do to these? They taste amazing. I said, they're just potatoes. He's like, yeah, I know, but what did you do to them? I was like, I just baked them because they have so much incredible flavor all on their own. So you can make these as mashed as you want. You can leave them a little more chunky if you want. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of the milk. And you can use soy milk if you want, um, that little bit of extra fat that's in the soy milk does make the potatoes a little bit richer because you, you know, have a little more fat in it. So it just depends. If you're in weight loss mode, then I would stay with the almond milk. Um, okay. Robin says, can you use an immersion blender instead of mashing? I've never tried making mashed potatoes with an immersion blender. Have you, AJ? I haven't. So, um, but I don't know if it's Yukon Golds. They're so soft. You really it don't might need work. one. Yeah. Might whip them. Who knows? Give it a try. Tom, Let us know. Report back. Tom said, Tom said you might end up with a, a Yukon Gold smoothie. Um, but you could try it and see. I don't know it because I've never tried it. Now, I like to add just a little bit of cayenne pepper 
to it. I just, it just adds a little kick to it. Not too much, but just a little bit. Like I, you know, eighth of a teaspoon or even less, a, a little pinch is good. Okay, and now they're they're starting to get a little bit thicker, so I am gonna add a little more milk. And I'm also gonna add two tablespoons of fresh chives. And if you don't have fresh chives, you can use the dried chives. So sometimes I don't have the fresh chives, especially right now with the pandemic, I don't go to the store unnecessarily. And so um, if I don't have fresh chives and I decide I want to make the potatoes, then I'll just use the dried chives. And they still add color, they still add flavor. Okay, and now we're just going to take and put these over the top of the lentils. So I'm just gonna move things around here a little bit. Yeah, I'm done with that tray actually, but I need the, um, that red spatula. Okay. Oh, listen, Diane says immersion blenders can turn mashed potatoes into glue. And Deborah says they can make them gummy. And, and okay. Deep, Th Deep Thief says it would make a mess. So maybe the answer is no. For these sound like people that tried that. And uh, Kylie says she's made your hearty lentil shepherd's pie and she loves it. Thank you, Kylie. That's so good to know. Okay, now we're just going to spread the potatoes over the top. And you know, I try to get it even just so that everybody gets the same amount. And I have to tell you guys that even people who eat the standard American diet love this recipe. So when we get together pre-pandemic for the holidays with extended family, I make this and we share it with them and they will go back for seconds. It's really that good. And look at just how pretty and buttery this looks. I love it. Now, everything is cooked, but I find that if you put it in the oven for about a half hour, it just helps everything set really well. And that way, when you go to serve it, the servings come out really nice because the lentils get just a little bit thicker and then I can cut it with a knife so that I can um, make like portion sizes for people. And you can get easily 10 servings out of this. But you always wanna go and get yours first because I tell you, everybody's gonna love it. And if you wait until be the last one to go through the buffet line, you won't get any. Now this is so pretty this way. I do like to, sometimes it just depends, but sometimes um, I do like to put this under the broiler after I have baked it for 30 minutes and just let the brown, uh, the top get a little bit browned. And I just like the look of that. But if your dish is not broiler safe, then what you can do is you can just sprinkle a little bit of sweet paprika over the top and a few more chives and that gives it a nice color. So I'm gonna have Tom put this in the oven and we're gonna set the timer for 30 minutes, Tom. And you see how easy, super easy that is to make. And I'm just gonna grab the ingredients for the fruity coleslaw. Is this good here? Yeah, it should be, that should be fine. Okay. Now I like to serve this with the fruity coleslaw. It just makes for a really nice combination. And the fruity coleslaw is actually really good to make this time of year because it uses the fruits that we can get right now. So the um, little mandarin oranges and apples and grapes, uh, you can use pineapple. I mean, it's you, whatever kind of fruit that you happen to have. So I'm making a little bit smaller batch today. So when you see the end result, I'm not gonna have as much as the recipe yields just because I'm not feeding a big crowd today. And so I didn't wanna have too much of it left over. So uh, you can buy 
coleslaw already pre-made for you, or you can make your own. And I'm kind of doing a mix of two. So I, did, I didn't want to buy a whole great big head of green cabbage um, because I'm just not that crazy for it. So I did buy some coleslaw mix and I added some uh, of the purple cabbage to it because I really love the look of the purple cabbage in this recipe. I get my recipe here. And then I like the uh, carrots as well. So I have about a cup of shredded carrots that are gonna go in here and a little celery chopped up. And really, you know, the portions can be whatever you like. And this is, uh, I think I have three mandarins in here. And a lot of times I'll make this for a large group and I'll actually double the recipe. And then I have oh, probably about a cup of raisins and uh, raisins. The raisins do come from grapes, but these happen to be red You're grapes. Ahead of yourself on them raisins, right? <laughs> I guess I am. And then I have apple and whatever kind of sweet apple you have that you like will be perfectly fine in this. And I'm just gonna stir this together. And like I said, I've used mango, I've used pineapple. Um, you know, you can change up the fruits depending on what's in season or, or what you have in your fridge. So this is just really colorful and really tasty. Oh, Tom, I'm gonna need my blender because we are going to make a dressing. Oh, and I wanna say that these recipes are in the new book that Chef AJ um, was a part of, the, the Own Your Health book. And so she asked me to submit some recipes. And so the shepherd's lentil pie and the fruity, um, the fruity coleslaw is not in there. I'm sorry, but the dressing is. And we're gonna make that dressing to go on the fruity coleslaw. And so the dressing that we're making is the creamy balsamic. And we're making the version with a white uh, vinegar. Tom, can you grab the um, Trader Joe's white vinegar for me out of here? I, that was the one thing that I forgot to, to put here. Just gonna make sure that I'm plugged in. AJ, does anybody have any questions? Let me see. There's just a lot of comments because they love you. Coleslaw looks amazing, says Christina. Well, I'm gonna need more than that one, so. Okay. It's funny that uh, Shonda says, when your Instant Pop beeped, everybody, everybody's looking around to see if it's their Instant Pop. That's, <laughs> I love that's that. great. Uh, That's funny. Robin says, Tammy's coleslaw looks delicious and so colorful. What a great idea to add a variety of fruit. Tiffany says, I, I spy the Own Your Health book in the back and it's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. She loves the caramel sauce recipe. Carousel's making the pie tonight minus the celery. She has everything but. Uh, nice. People like your sous chef, Tom. He's adorable, isn't he? Tom, yep. can you give me a measure? I need a measuring cup. Just that two cup one, the glass one that's in the back, that would be fine. Okay, so this is the creamy balsamic dressing, but we're going to make it with the uh, white balsamic. Now, if I'm just making it like a regular salad, I'll go ahead and just use like the regular balsamic that's dark, but because this is a coleslaw, I don't want it to look dark and dingy. And so this is a white balsamic. You can find them at just about every grocery store. I just happened to get this one at Trader Joe's. And so we are going to need a half a cup of this. And it just keeps it nice and clear. It's also a little bit lighter in flavor than the dark vinegar, which I really like for the coleslaw because we really want the flavor of all those fruits to come out as well. And yeah, okay. why? It seems like a lot. Oh, no. Well, because we're making a, a big batch of dressing. And we're not going to use all of it because I'm making a smaller amount. So you don't have to have a high powered blender to make this dressing because the ingredients that are going in it are pretty soft. I'm using one box of the white beans. These are cannellini beans and these are no salt added. If you have the kind that have salt in them, just put them, um, rinse them 
and drain them really well. And if you have a can instead of the box, it'll work with that. I know that the can has a little um, more in it than the box does, and it'll still work beautifully. And so those beans have been rinsed and drained, and they're just all going right in there. So you use a cheaper balsamic when you're making your dressing? For this one, I do because it really doesn't seem to matter. If you use a more expensive one, it seems to taste the same. So, and I prefer to reserve my expensive vinegars, you know, to where I'm going to use them in a little bit smaller quantities. So now we're going to add a little bit of sweetness to this to counter that um, vinegar, the acid in the vinegar. And so it's up to you how many dates you're going to use. You could use dates, you could use date paste, you could use like Dylan from Well Your World has a new date powder. So um, I'm going to be sharing this with my daughter and her family. So um, they prefer things a little sweeter. And so I'm going to use four pitted dates. And it's really important, you guys, to remember to pit those dates. So what I usually do is I pit them and then however many dates I used, I count my pits before I throw them away to make sure that I got them all out. And that is from personal experience of not doing that and hearing that blender go chug, chug, chug and having a batch ruined. Then I'm going to use a little bit of the Westbray no salt added stone ground mustard. This is super delicious. You can usually find this at health food stores. Um, Sprouts locally carries it and you can buy it on Amazon. And that's what I do because we use a lot of it. And so I just buy it on Amazon. I get a case at a time and it has a long life. So that works. And then this is a little bit of um, Mrs. Dash garlic and herb seasoning and I'm just using um, a couple teaspoons of it. You could use fresh garlic or if you have some other kind of garlic herb seasoning, you could use that and also a little bit of unsweetened plant milk is going in here and that's just like a cup of that and then we're going to blend it until it's creamy and smooth. <laughs> Sometimes Zoom mutes the sound and sometimes they don't. Does Tom know that? Do you know, that's, did it not, did it not? It, um, it didn't mute at this time, but that's okay. Oh, I was yeah. just curious. Come around and explain it. Get on camera. Honey. Yeah, Tom, we want to know because, okay. you know. The speakers are gated. And so to pull that off, you have to start talking and kind of grab the signal before she starts blending because it tends oh. to grab the loudest sound, whoever's talking the loudest, like me right now. But if before Tammy pushes the button, then you jump in and start talking or any other guest that's doing blending, you can say, well, I'm going to chat a bit while you blend because you can see what's going on on our end, right? In the split view. So, so what's important is that you start talking first and then we start blending and it should keep you as the, as the screen until, in, in, until you stop talking and then it'll come back to where the noise is. So experiment with that sometime. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, you have to give that a try, AJ. So um, can they see this, Tom? Um, uh, well, let me turn on the other camera. Let's okay. Let's step inside. Yeah, so here Hold you go. Hold this camera up here. There you go. That's easier to see down in there. Yeah, it's just really nice and yeah, creamy. Sure. And so if you make it ahead of time, you know, I just store it in like a um, ball canning jar. Oh, okay and put that in my refrigerator. And as it sets, it does thicken up a bit, um, which is kind of interesting. You would never know it has beans in it. And this is a dressing that I developed when I first joined Chef AJ's 
um, weight loss program because I was previously making one similar to it, but it had cashews in it and I knew I needed to lower the calorie density of it. And so I substituted the white cannellini beans because it gives it thickness and creaminess, but they're really bland on their own. And so they substitute really well for cashews in recipes. Um, I know AJ, you use cauliflower quite a bit. Um, so you could experiment with cauliflower if you don't have the cannellini beans in here. And then how much dressing you use is going to be up to you. Um, it just depends on, you know, how, how uh, wet you like the coleslaw to be. So I'm gonna start with that amount and then adjust once I get it mixed up now, one thing that Tom and I like to do, like I'll usually make this as a side dish to, to go with a meal and then we'll have some left over. And so we'll make a meal out of it, just the coleslaw itself the next day. I will just add, can, um, I'll add garbanzo beans. And we love that. It just makes it taste really good. It makes it more filling and it turns it into a complete meal for us. So this is what it looks like. And I have to tell you, this is like really popular. Um, we teach weight loss classes when there isn't a pandemic. And I'll double this recipe. I'll make a full um, two batches of it. And the people in our weight loss classes just go crazy for it. In fact, I didn't have a recipe initially because it was just something that I just um, make up as I go. And I make it a little bit different every time. But they were like, no, we want the recipe. You have to come up with the recipe for us. So this is just some celery seed that I have. You can buy this in any grocery store. And I just like, I think it adds a, something pretty to it. You can see it looks like it has freckles. Um, but it also adds a little bit of a salty flavor to it. Because the Celery is a little bit higher in sodium. Somebody's at our front door. This stuff always happens. When That's funny. I, I, I thought maybe that was an alarm. Barbara says uh, you you did say you could freeze it. And have you actually frozen this? And how have you frozen it? Frozen the dressing? No, the, uh, the, the shepherd's pie. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I have not frozen it because um, we always eat it, but I would just put it in like a glass or a plastic container that has a tight fitting lid and put it in the freezer. So, you know, you can buy some frozen entrees and things that have like mashed potatoes on them. So I think, I think that it would freeze fine, but um, I have never frozen it because we always eat it all up. So there you go. That is the fruity coleslaw. Super easy and really delicious. AJ, do you have any questions? I always have questions, but let's see if the other people have questions. Um, now the dressing will last for about, you know, five days in the refrigerator. And so um, you'll be able to use it on your salads. And it makes a fun little dip. Like if you like to, I like to make fresh spring rolls and it makes a nice refreshing dip with that. You can take that same recipe and you can change it up. Like sometimes I'll put a little bit of orange segments in it and blend those in it and add a little bit of ginger and it gives it a really nice Asian flavor. And so, and you can also make it with strawberries and have a strawberry balsamic dressing. So just lots that you can do with it. It's really um, fun and easy and it's very economical. So the way I like to serve up that shepherd's pie and it still has 15 minutes. I wasn't sure how long um, everything was gonna take if we might be able to plate it, but it doesn't look like we will. But here's how I like to serve it up. So I like to serve it with a little bit of the fruity coleslaw. And then this is my uh, cranberry chutney and I just made a batch of it this morning and this recipe is on our youtube channel as well as on the blog and so that just makes really delicious plate and it's a beautiful colorful um plate as well because you have your piece of shepherd's pie and then you have the fruity coleslaw and then the cranberry chutney and it's also very holiday-ish looking and then for dessert i like to make my apple oat 
crisp. And that's just, you know, it's like a whole comfort meal because we have the shepherd's pie with the mashed potatoes, which are so comforting. And then end with the apple oat crisp. And it's really delicious. And especially if you serve it a la mode and AJ and I both have champion juicers. Um, I can blame her for me having to get one because when we went down and uh, stayed there in Indio for a week, several times she made the uh, banana ice cream in the champion juicer for us and with bananas as well as different other fruits. And we could not believe the difference. It was like the most amazing soft serve that we ever had just made with frozen fruits. She even made one with frozen grapes and it was incredible. And so I had to get one after we got home as well. And But you can make it really delicious in your blender or in your food processor or a Yonana's machine and then um, serve that serve it a la mode. And if you want that apple oat crisp recipe, you guys visit my blog and you can just Google apple oat crisp nutmeg notebook and Google will find the link for you easy peasy. And it's super easy and delicious. And it was one of the recipes that was just featured in the health science magazine in the fall edition. So I was super excited about that. And AJ, we need to ask everybody to please, please follow me on Instagram again, in case anybody's just come on watching us. I'm trying to get up to 10,000 subscribers so that I get access to all of the tools that they have. Um, you know, they divvy out the tools depending on how many subscribers you have. So if you're on Instagram, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to Nutmeg Notebook, I do try to post every day and several times a week I post what I eat in a day. That's a huge question that AJ and I get from people all the time wanting to know what we eat. So I do take pictures and I try to give you links to the recipes or if they come out of um, a book like Chef AJ's or another plant-based author's cookbook, I try to give you um, the resource so that you can find the recipe yourself. How's that looking, honey? It's not browning yet. Well, we have to broil it for a little bit to get it brown on top. So um, anybody have any questions for me? Well, I do. What are you making on Christmas Day that you're so busy that you can't do my show that day? Uh, well, we're going to be busy with the kids. We have three grandchildren under the age of four. So um, the twins are two, and then our oldest granddaughter is um, four. And so we're going to be busy with them. And our daughter and I haven't we're trying worked to make out that more of an events day than a food day. Yeah, we're it's trying. Family events. Yeah. So um, our daughter and I, uh, we don't want to spend all day in the kitchen, and so we haven't formalized a meal yet. Um, one year, I'll tell you some of the things that we've done. One year, we did a brunch, and that was really fun. So, you know, ahead of time, I have a breakfast oat um, sausage recipe that's on the blog. And so I made those ahead of time. We made um, just uh, little hash browns in the air fryer. That was super easy. Uh, I made a chia jam and we had waffles and we made the waffles ahead of time a couple days before and then we just put them in the toaster the breville um, toaster oven to crisp them up and i made a tofu scramble and uh, fresh fruit and hot tea and then instead of spending the whole day at home we went up to the snow and went sledding and that was so much fun and something different a lot of times um, if we're going to stay home for um, the whole day, I will make my lasagna. So I have a really easy but super delicious lasagna recipe that's on the blog. And we even made a video on it too, on how to make it. It's, and, a, it's a two part thing, isn't it? It's, well, we have the, to I have a video showing you how to make the tofu ricotta. I make my own marinara sauce. It's which, a three part series. Which is really uh, super easy and a faux parmesan. And then uh, we have a video showing you how to assemble it, how yeah, to put it all together. That's a good holiday dish, in, in, but we did break it up. So I do think I have them in a, in a playlist. So, so if you start with the, the faux ricotta, then it'll lead you to the other two. Yeah. And so, and then sometimes we do the shepherd's pie, but since we're having that this week, um, we probably won't want it again on Christmas. And so we change it up. So one year we did uh, a burrito bowl buffet. And so we did taco lentils 
and refried beans and cilantro lime rice and um, our, well, we had a different cheese sauce. We have a chipotle nacho cheese sauce now, and we just set up a whole buffet for the family and let everybody go through the line and make their own burrito bowl. Or they could make a taco because we did have like corn tortillas for everyone too. So we kind of change it up and do non-traditional things. If it's nice out, they'll go play cornhole outside. Yes. So we live in Northern California. And if it's not raining that day, then we will go outside. We traditionally, we always go for a walk outside um, if the weather is decent. And even our little two-year-old grandchildren are great little hikers uh, because we take, Tom and I take them out every week on little excursions. And so they love being outside. So we kind of do things a little bit non-traditional, both with our food and what we do, because we just don't want to be sitting around and in the kitchen, cooking, cleaning, and eating all day. And being in a food coma so that you can't even enjoy each other's company. Yeah, exactly. So so we haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do. As it gets closer and we know what the weather is going to do that day, that will help us decide. And where we live, we're really close to the um, the foothills and there's amazing hiking trails there. And so it's very easy for us in like 20 minutes, we can uh, go up and get on a nice hiking trail. And that's fun because a lot of people, a lot of the hikers up in the Sierras, they decorate some of the trees out on the trails. And so that's really fun. It's unexpected. You know, you come around a corner and all of a sudden, here's this tree that's got ornaments on it. It's so much fun. Have you ever thought of barbecue sauce with your hearty lentil shepherd's pie? That's where I would go with it, I think. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. So Jesse, our Jesse has, your Jesse, my Jesse, everyone's Jesse has a question. Yes. Would you ask Tammy how the bean dressing holds up on the salad a day or two after in the refrigerator? So if, if. I'm, if I'm making it and not going to serve it that day, what I will do is I will keep the dressing separate. Thank you so much for asking that, Jesse. So then I'll just keep it separate because you know how coleslaw starts to uh, release the water well, the that's in it too, and sense. the vinegar breaks down the vegetables. And so if I'm going to make up a batch of it and it's just for Tom and I, then I will save the dressing separate, and then I'll just take out enough, put it in a bowl, put dressing on it, just enough to serve the two of us. So thank you so much for asking that, Jesse. I forgot to mention that. I can always um, count on her. I can always count on Jesse. Old Pueblo Vegan says, will there be shrooms in this shepherd's pie? There aren't, but maybe I could substitute the the lentils for mushrooms for me. Yeah, I think you could. And AJ, you might also be able to do like the riced cauliflower. That do sounds a combination good. of riced cauliflower and the mushrooms. Yeah, I thought t- about that this week, but I didn't have time to experiment. Oh, that's you. okay. Tiffany wants to know where you can purchase Nutmeg Notebook aprons. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have them yet. So um, we do get asked that. What's Tiffany's last name? I'm wondering if Wilkerson. it's Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Yeah. Hi, Tiffany. I know the the ladies um, that moderate for us are always asking about aprons. And we just haven't, you know, we haven't even contacted where we got these made yet because it's a small family business here locally. Um, we need to see if they're even open right now. And um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. And Tiffany also wants to know, what is, it, uh, what is Tom's special meal that he makes in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Dump soup. <laughs> she knows that. She's just agitating. Yeah, so, so yeah, you come my, over here. My steamed say. vegetable soup. You know, it got nicknamed it. Dump Soup because I just open up the fridge and the Brussels sprouts that are looking tired celery that's looking tired, the carrots that are looking kind of dried out, the mushrooms that are starting to deform a little bit, all of that gets dumped into the into the Instapot. I use a six quart Instapot. I load up the little steamer basket and then um, and and I get, you know, a whole big white bowl of steamed vegetables out of that. I I put mushrooms in there and and I I cut a couple of potatoes. I'll use like maybe a cup, a cup of potatoes, not more than that. And I get I get to eat that for like 40 minutes. You know, I cut fresh basil, uh, a Thai basil, and mix in with it. So, so that's that's kind of most days that we're at home. That's what I have for lunch when we're at the 
my daughter's house looking after the grandkids, then I then I take a uh, what I call cube soup, a frozen prepared soup. A lot of times it's it's that uh, uh, red lentil chili from a lady I know that came up with a wonderful chili soup. And then nice. what do you eat for dinner usually? Chopped salad. Chopped salad. So, with oh, with I, what? I, if you don't want to wait for that, I do have this ready to go here on what this looks like. Oh, you can show them that. So, yeah, I've got it under. I've got the broiler going right now. So okay. here's here's a picture of the lentil shepherd's oh, pie. Okay, wait. He's gonna do it. It's is it not on? Is it not on number four? So Tom, while you're doing that, Wanda says you can turn off original sound in the upper left corner of Zoom screen to mute the Vitamix noise. Wanda, are you saying that they can do it, or are you guys watching can do it? Yeah, who can do it? Yeah, because I don't I don't see that button on my side. There, Shonda says it's the end of the week soup. The end of the week soup. That's a good thing. Cindy so, says, are you going to be doing basic start or reboot videos to inspire us for healthy 2021? We actually have a um, the ultimate reboot program that's starting in January. If you check it out, if you're interested, make sure you're on my website. It's me, John Pierre, Dr. Goldhammer, and Dr. Lyle. It's a 30 day program and it's really amazing. And when does that start, AJ? Um, I don't know if it's starts January. I think January 10th, but it's gonna we're gonna start uh, unveiling it soon to let people know it's been okay. a while in the making, getting all the guys together. Do I have a coupon code for Nutri Milk? Absolutely, Nancy. If you would check any of my videos on YouTube, I have five of them with uh, with Nutri Milk. I'll see if I can pull it up for you right now while we're while we're still on live. Hold on. Uh, yes, here we go. If you buy it uh, this month, it's 21% off. And here, let me give you my code right now in the chat box. It's so funny that I have able to get that screen up. And after that, you can get a $50 discount. But right now, it's like $105. There you go. And free shipping if you get by the 15th. So very cool. I'll be making more videos with that. I, I have a cinnamon, a Cinnabon milk, I call it. It tastes like a cinnamon bun. And I found out we can do ice cream in it as well. So is, is, uh, is Tom doing something? He's, yeah. He's yeah. working on it. Did you get it? No, you're, you're, you stay on camera for a second. I'm okay. A picture. He's trying, you know, this All new right. technology. I got it. I found it. He found it. I Woo! had to go see what file it was in. Okay, so here's the finished product. That's what it looks like. Can you see it? Yep, it's on there. It is for us. Is it showing for you, AJ? Yeah, yeah that looks unbelievable. Just the mashed potato part. Oh my God. I know, it's so delicious. It's, uh, it's starting to get a little bit brown from the, oh, here we go. It's getting brown enough. I'm gonna pull it out so we can show. And Tom, show them the apple crisp. Okay, I'll show them the apple crisp. That's a different picture. Um, here it is. Okay, so are you going to talk about the apple crisp? You speak up because you don't have your local mic on. There we go. Okay, so that's the apple crisp, you guys. And our little, um, our oldest granddaughter absolutely loves it. And she wants me to make it for her every week. So um, she's coming over tonight. So I'll be making it for her for tonight. And she told me, she calls me Lita. And she said, Lita, you can make it all the days. And for her, that means every day. She's like, Lita, you can make it all the days. So yeah, it's starting to brown up. I yeah, it started good. to brown up. So I had it um, under the broiler for just a couple minutes. And um, that way it does brown. And uh, I'll do all this stuff. Okay. You need to stay on camera here. And oh, it smells amazing. And so you want to let it just cool for a little bit before you try to cut it because right now it'll it'll just be a little bit um, liquidy but as it cools down just like 10 15 minutes is all it needs and it's a it's a great way great one to take with you if you have to take a dish someplace a hot dish and I have one of those carriers you know that keeps it hot so then I'll just cover it with foil and put it in my carrier and probably people aren't doing that this Christmas but just so you know um, it does work well to do that as well and then before I serve it I do like to sprinkle it with just a little more of the fresh chive just to pretty it up you know we eat with our eyes first and it just makes it really pretty 
to have more of the chives. Plus they add a nice little boost of flavor, which is great. So this is a really nice holiday dish to make, but also, you know, it's a good one for every day. If you want comfort food, why not? I say. Uh, no, that was spectacular. Thank you so much. Boy, you're making me hungry. Luckily, I have something to eat in the air fryer right now. So that is great. Um, I'm hungry too. I haven't eaten yet today. Have you eaten yet? Today? No, not yet. Just my pot liquor. Actually, I had a double dose of pot liquor. So some of you were asking me well, where, where you can see the Gold Hammer interview. Just make sure you're on my mailing list. It was for the 2021 Truth About Weight Loss Summit. So I just like to do things in advance. Well, it's always great catching up with Tammy and Tom or Tommy and Tam, depending on how you look at it. And thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow because we have a very special lecture with Dr. John McDougall at 9 a.m. He is giving a brand new talk about the potato. He has never given it before. So please make sure you watch live and share it. It's at nine o'clock, a special time. It's going to be a two-part talk tomorrow, Saturday, and the following Saturday. And then our regular show at 11, who is the guest? Oh, another wonderful chef from the Cook Along who's going to be there at Christmas, Carol Levy. So you guys, this is the best television there is. You are the Martha Stewart of vegan, I've always said, Tammy. Thank you so much, AJ. Hey, can can we give a little plug for our show? On um, Sunday? Sunday. Of course. At, okay, thank you. Sunday at 4 p.m. We do a live show on the Nutmeg Notebook YouTube channel. Pacific, 4 p.m. Pacific. 4 p.m. Pacific time. We're in the same time zone as AJ. So this coming Sunday, we actually have Nelson and Kim Campbell. And so we're super excited. We got to meet them on the Holistic Holiday at Sea Cruise last year that we went on and they are just so delightful and they have a whole new line of whole food um, plant-based products that are shelf stable they're called meal starters and so they're going to be sharing all about that it's really exciting um i'm really i'm looking forward to it so so anyway if you can join us on sunday at 4 p.m yeah, they're, Pacific. they're broadcasting from their own their home kitchen yeah they're going to be in their kitchen we're going to be in our kitchen it's going to be casual and fun and and you can find us on youtube almost every sunday at 4 p.m pacific so thanks so much aj for absolutely i'm so glad today. i had that concussion because you got to meet a lot of people <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to bring it up. That's okay. No, I'm glad. I'm glad to do it. And and uh, what was I going to say? Yes. Uh, 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 Tiffany says, Tammy and Tom's show on Sunday is fantastic. And so does Kylie. So you got a lot of fans here. Deborah St. Nice. Kitchen is another great show. No, it's good. It's good. It's, and you get, it's funny how you guys are color coordinated now too. And that just happened accidentally this morning. Sometimes he does look at what I have on and then he tries to wear something that won't clash. But this, this was an accident, I think, today. Yeah, no, blue, blue is definitely your color, Tammy. Absolutely. And guys, please, I know that if you're not on Instagram, of course, you're not going to go to subscribe to Tammy. But if you're already on Instagram, what the heck? Just whatever, subscribe, follow, whatever it's called. But uh, she needs just 700 more, and then she can get to the next level, whatever that is. Yeah. Are we going to do a next day to Tammy? Yeah, sure. When she's oh. ready. Okay, yes. so I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy and stay healthy one meal at a time. Take care. Bye-bye, you guys.